My Guilty Gear Strive is still downloading, which means we gotta speed run this video before it does. Well, folks, it's another week, another day, another time to recap news and card reveals and all that good stuff from the last week or so. I don't know when I'm gonna start doing these videos because they take up a lot of time, but you guys seem to like them still, so we keep them going. And it's a nice way for me to kind of go over stuff that gets revealed and kind of talk about reveals, because it's not just the reveals of the Tuesdays, but reveals from, you know, everything leading up to the Tuesday over the week that are also cool. Also, this is your not specifically timed reminder that apparently still 35% of y'all are not subscribed to the channel. And while a lot of y'all have been coming through, I do want to reach 45k soon and use Great Aisha's effect. So if you could come through, that'd be really, really cool. Much appreciated. Also, huge thanks to everyone that tuned into the BSFO stream. I really, really appreciate everyone coming through. You know, all the kind words after our commentary with Kai, you know, we're really, really appreciate it. I have a video, like several videos talking about the actual like tournaments and stuff coming up over this week, you know, for like the standard format, you know, how the top deck look than like the top 16s and all that stuff some interesting lists that kind of popped up here and there and then also i'll have a video on v premium and then i can also want to do a video similar to what kai did kind of talking about like my perspective on the event as a commentator and also just kind of talk about things outside of the gameplay or like outside of just vanguard but more so about the community and like the crazy things that allowed for this to even happen and like you know the cool feedback that BSFO has been having online. So I really want to talk about a lot of those things, but those will be for a different video. So I'd rather focus on those things like in their respective videos rather than just kind of like cram it in here as like quickly as possible. So let's just talk about cards today. All right, we ain't wasting no time. It's DBTO2 reveal time. First, we got a comment for Bruce. Diablo's attacker Alvin, when it attacks a Vanguard on Vanguard Breeder Circle, he can soul plus one and he gains plus 5k power for that battle. If you're in final rush, 15 instead of 5. So this feels like a, I don't know, lower costed Colossus, basically. Let me check Colossus. Hold on. It was like Soul blood, soul Charge 1, right? It was like first Soul Charge 1, and then you make Animals 1 to give him 15. Yeah, whereas this is Soul Blast 1 to give him 15. So it's not too bad, actually. <laughs> it's actually kind of interesting. I first looked at this card, like, ugh, this seems bad. But with how much soul production there looks to be in this upcoming set, I think that you might not want Colossus as much anymore. So if you want those kind of like big beefy attacks, this might be the play instead and it also lets you basically get that power up for you know grade three turns but the only problem is that the power up is only for that battle so when you resend him with bruce you lose that power up so that kind of sucks so yeah it might be that fact that he only gains power for that battle that restricts him from being used much but it's an interesting card then we got the the actual blitz order for uh bruce special violence yell that's a that's a nice way to just you know talk about yelling in general choose one of your diablos bruce on vanguard rigor circle and it gets power plus 20k until end of that battle this is a really solid 20k order the only problem is that you know it only works on vanguards which i guess is the main place where you're guarding with 20k on but now with this plus the actual you know fronts that we're getting this is really really nice in terms of defensive options but this will probably only go in the build that tries to play the long game i think bruce is such an aggressive deck that doesn't really need to worry about these kind of like blitz orders for now but i personally like them i really like defensive cards but we're just gonna see if this list requires it i'm also gonna sandwich like i'm not gonna like split this between like standard v premium and premium i'm gonna like just kind of slip whatever was was revealed over the time of course i made a video about that are being revealed y'all already know you know i don't need to talk about it more but this was actually insane you know watch that video of its own also the you know ultimate riser mega flare uh legion retrain in the v series was also talked about in that video about die kaiser so watch it there oh, i guess it doesn't hurt like die prop the grade one that you see says basically it has a draw skill as a vanguard and as a rear guard it powers up your vanguard so that's quite cool you know extra draw effects are always nice in dp and it feels like that's like something that we could especially use in the early game at times then kaiser himself has a powerful skill when road upon so what if that means like increase the base crit increase power maybe both and as a rear guard it is also powerful attacker so this feels like platinum ace to me but like platinum ace 2.0 which i think is fine and then of course die kaiser himself hit with a high powered attack that can only be blocked by sentinels even when those sentinels are called believe in the power of justice has excellent synergy with great daisha let's unify the two justices and show their true power so basically it really hints at you know guard break as they kind of you know allude to that like believe in justice to break through those sentinels and of course they said like like them saying it has synergy with great Dayusha. I mean, basically anything in DP has great synergy with Dayusha. So I think it's just there to remind people that they need that card. But basically, like any any card in DP for the time being, outside of I guess Brad Black, has really good synergy with great Dayusha. So pick up your copies if you haven't, because they're not being reprinted until like what? What when was the reprint policy thing that Modi P said? Like I don't know, like 2022, three? I can't remember. Then the riser cards, uh, the grade one or whatever. I don't actually know what kind of. Grade 
raid that like thing on the left will be raptor riser lets you convert another rear guard into a riser call any riser depending on the current situation so i guess it searches your deck for different risers so basically you can choose like i don't know like a rest a shout to maybe like draw or soul charge and then convert into a riser that would be cool that'd be cool then the dual flare the grade two is a rear guard that counter charges while powering up both itself and your vanguard which is very cool novas could definitely use more counter charging it's always very appreciated and then mega flare says restand your risers and launch a continuous string of attacks combined with dual flare for something even stronger than simply restanding rear guards so this kind of hints towards that cat butler being pretty useful maybe they'll try to do like something like the shadow legion uh for the shadow witch legion how they retrain that where the grade two could also kind of like drive check and stuff so that would be pretty interesting i would definitely be cool with that uh, then there was a grade one for prison reveal during one of the videos in the official Vanguard channel, uh, which says, I'll just put up a picture here and just translate it directly. If your prison has one or less cards, you may rest this unit and then choose a unit card from your opponent's drop zone and imprison it in your prison. So this card from the people testing uh, set two already, I'm kind of holding off until the full set, full set list is out. They've been saying that this card apparently makes prison insanely good. Like this actually turns on prison and makes that entire deck just kind of work. And so I think that this little Mecha Godzilla very appreciated if you can turn on a good early game then i'm definitely going to be taking it right this is just like good card galore then of course last week there was a lot of the premium collection reprints so here's the gold paladin ones of course we get the uh, prominence glare finally but in terms of the reprints some people said this is pretty weak i personally think it's pretty good grd is a good reprint both gurgus strides are good reprints slamey flare is a really good reprint that was getting pretty hard to get from what i know the other two are kind of whatever like the gurgwit grade three i guess it's for collection purposes maybe and then the catch girl is cool i don't think i've seen it used much lately but it, it's fine for touch these are pretty nice as well the two strides are used the g guardian is used again the gaia here is like uh, maybe not but then the like actual v series grade two and grade one are super key so that's nice and of course the stand trigger there the cold magnum is you'll find it in plenty 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 of touch premium lists then of course dark irregulars oh this one got people riled up of course castile diamondus reprint uh the later mouse reprint agrat Pat Machlat reprint to me this, these are nice dimension creeper is super hard to get original yellow bolt is still used in premium to this day and of course the cat oh my god the cat is still a super expensive and hard to get thing Sharod here not as hot of course people saw this and were like oh my god no you're reprinting gustil daimos that means you're not going to restrict it you're not going to hit it you know they 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 did reprint it but literally the next slide we'll look at you know what let's look at it right now Neo Nectar. You see what's on here? Lisbeth. Lisbeth is a restricted card. They are willing to reprint restricted cards, which to me tells me that, you know, this was just made, I don't know, before the restri restriction list was decided. And therefore, you know, even if there's a card reprinted, that doesn't mean it's going to get restricted. That doesn't mean it's safe on the ban list or whatever. Speaking of which, though, Neo Nectar reprints, for the most part, really good outside of maybe that Asha. It feels the same as the Gurgwit. The Asha just doesn't feel as good as like maybe like a blue Asha would have been. But the Stride is good. The G Guard is, I mean, used. The PG is used and the Grade 2 is of course really good, especially Sylvia was needing a reprint in my opinion. But yeah, so do I think Azdil Diamonds will be hit? Yes, I do think so. Even after this reprint, yes, I do think so. I don't see a reason for them not to. It just feels like, like yeah, it, you know, it's a card that virtually makes like Dark Irregulars and Dark States uh, by an extent get kind of like put in a corner of for design choices because they have to always work around Gastil Diamonds or just not care and break Gastil Diamonds every time and so I think it's better just just hit it just get rid of it it's honestly probably better for the game and for Dark Raiders as a whole then we got a double rare for Keter Sanctuary Diamond Sorceress oh boy is she pretty drawn by Fuzi Choco oh so good her effect is when placed on Rigor Circle from hand if your Vanguard is Hex Orb Sorceress or Pentagleam Sorceress so grade 3 or grade 2 can almost 1 and discard 1 to look at top two cards of your deck choose up to two unit cards from among them call them and put the rest in the top of your deck in any order that's actually really nice because Calmos one discard one to basically plus one to field is actually quite nice because you virtually can use something like you know right up on the pentagleam stack three and then let's say like normally if you saw a bunch of units you would put them on the bottom right and then keep like trying to like go for triggers find triggers find triggers but here you can actually keep those units on top use her skill to just field them she's a grade one so if you see like a grade two and a grade three just boop, plop them on the board and you know then you can use other stacking abilities to actually like find the triggers i think diamond sorceress makes hex orb even better like y'all are y'all don't realize how 
how good this deck is going to get with this set. Like, I think the deck is already decent as it is. It got top 16 in BSFO as well in standard. So it definitely has potential already in set one that people are kind of like sleeping on. And I think with set two, this deck is looking really good. Like a lot of decks are getting insane support in this set. And he like Hexa Orb is definitely one of them. They also got a grade three. It's a common. This is Octair Ward Sorceress. Octair Ward Sorceress. Not sure on the pronunciation. Auto, when a trigger unit appears in your drive check, if your Vanguard is Hexa Orb Sorceress, retire her to counter charge one or soul charge one so this card the counter charge is nice but i feel like at this point i would rather pay the soul blast two from the grade one to do it and then the soul charge is nice but mm, to like in exchange of a unit it's like sure you open up space on your board for future turns but generally like if i'm putting down cards on the board i want them to stick and this just feels like a bit too much of a minus so i don't know it's mainly for the soul i think but like that self-retire just doesn't really sit that well with me i think this card is okay but that's about it and then we had more clan collection reveals we basically had these every single day so they really like got padded out throughout old time this was kagura and link joker so for kagura they got seal dragons big back back in here karuze corduroy as well as the original blockade literally trying to pull itself out of hell which is a pretty insane artwork so in terms of these guys uh Kersey and corduroy say both of them have unusual skills that force the opponent to call grade twos wow crazy blockade retire the opponent's grade two rearguards at once let's retire the grade twos called by Kersey and corduroy even if there's no great two rearguards dot 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 question mark exclamation mark can greatly work with Dauntless Drive Dragon as well, which has shown to be a great support unit for many Kagero decks. So yeah, it's a pretty cool archetype you know just being able to force great twos it's always been an interesting deck but i want to see what they mean to do with that like oh there's no great twos and you can still do stuff with this deck because you know it's it's a fan favorite so i think they will probably do something special for it but then for me the main hype was of course the star vaders for link joker i talked about these a lot on like throughout the entire weekend of bsfo they printed once again palladium colony maker and infinite zero dragon so palladium has a skill that can lock an opponent's card when a locked card is unlocked so basically like its original effect colony maker calls a star vader rearguard from deck that's also pretty insane because it's just for v premium that makes the chaos deck way more consistent like i can't even describe how much more consistent this makes it you know whether it's a search for the grade one that like you know puts itself into the soul to like unlock something to relock something else like this is already like just that single line that this deck searches for star vaders makes the deck way more consistent and having more star vader names also means that you don't lift your searches as much which is super dope so thank you very much colony maker is a very welcome return and then of course infinite zero dragon says lock an opponent's rearguard when riding and when you call it which is pretty cool goes without saying has great synergy with chaos breaker dragon so of course this is going to be i think a pretty important support wave that will probably push chaos and v premium way 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 higher i like how also now that overdress you know standard is the standard has changed to be overdress focused they're willing to you know just explore more with lock you once again in v premium i i like lock as a mechanic so i'm generally pretty happy like you guys know that chaos is one of my favorite decks in zero and so i've been really enjoying it in v premium but i do feel like it's lacking and so with this coming support wave i really like what we're doing here all right then we had more reveals for premium collection narukami uh this one was kind of hit or miss like this like v max is used but v buster i think it's called like the one that the one that basically powers up your front row would have been way better in my opinion both g guards are actually used and pretty hard to get sparking is i guess if you're playing g format a important card but otherwise not really chobo has another reprint this year so that's an interesting one that they chose to reprint twice the biggest win for me here is anastasia like anastasia that PG is actually used in this deck and it's a really really good one because I think for a lot of people that didn't pick it up back then for G era and Arakami was a missing card and the centric is also used so that's also quite cool the Genesis reprints were definitely another one that people looked at like oh my god they're not gonna kill a Federer loop what are we supposed to do ah like screaming screaming everywhere uh, this one is pretty hot I mean the stride the Amaruda stride is really good G guard's very nice Minerva is a collector item so therefore it's a nice pick as well Grappa and Valencia I think are also good picks you know these are very important for premium genesis just to kind of refill the soul yalogja and taro are definitely the problem children here i still think that you know like at least taro or maybe also gelja will get hit and i think that it's fine if they do even if they're after reprints which is like 
you know, just like the Neo Nectar Sand Trigger, it's fine if they go to one after being reprinted. But for the people that want to still pick them up or even want to pick them up while they're at one, this will make it easier. So, you know, I'm all for it. But that, in my opinion, is not even the best, like in terms of like sought after cards reprint list. Pale Moon. Oh my God. I've seen people try to complain about this. How can you complain about this when you have Flying Periton, Purple Trapezist, and the Prankster Girl all in one reprint list? This is insane. The Flying Periton is is like has been impossible to get for years. Purple Trapeze is even more so. And then other reprints are really nice. Masquerade Master is a very much like a staple in this G zone. The G guard is also very much a staple. The promo and the other Grade 3 Harry, sure, I can understand. They're not that necessary. They're mostly there, like just to get like, you know, the promo is like to get Japanese cards into English, whereas the Grade 3 is like, yeah, I mean it's it's fine. But dude, Periton and Trapezist alone make the Pale Moon reprints insane. And then for Mega Colony, these are actually huge. I don't see many people talking about them because they put Optirandos back in it's as a reprint that's insane and also overwhelm like those are two super expensive strides for this deck that were like GRs before like super hard to pull and get the GRs as well are very nice Gridora the old one is fine like why you know it's, it's it's still used in some decks and then the crit and stand are also pretty nice reprints in my opinion so actually the Mega Colony one is like a 9 out of 10 like this is a really good list of reprints and just overall very very nice back to other card reveals there was a double rare for Dragon Empire revealed, which feels pretty generic. Stealth Dragon Togashi. Toga Chirashi. So during your turn, when he's discarded from your hand, you can put him into your soul. So this is nice because it's good for Nirvana because you discard for Trick Stars and I guess it fuels soul for your Verinas. Maybe Verina Elgar will use soul. Who knows? We'll find out next week. And then on top of that, Dragonic Overlord that was shown today, of course, also discards. So uh, and does use soul for stuff like Nahalem. So hey, that's not bad. It seems like a pretty nice generic double rare, so nothing wrong with it. Oh man. This was prayers that will reach someday. The Blitz Order for Dragon Empire. Soul Boss 1 is the cost. If you have a rear guard with overdress, choose a unit and give it plus 15k power until end of battle. Now this one, in my opinion, is worse than Burn Bright Pure Prayers. It's, it has a cost that Burn Bright doesn't have. And on top of that, it gives the same amount of power. If this was 20k, that's a different story. Then I would actually probably use this. The art is so nice though. Like all the arts with the Blaze Maidens on them look so insane. So it's a bit of a shame that this isn't plus 20k power bit weird but i mean i guess we'll take it all right more reprints i won't be talking about the ones that that us the content creators revealed you can watch my dp video you can watch kai's link joker video you can watch mr time leaps you know vanguard insiders gear chronicle video you can watch of course solemn's grand blue video but we got some more ott we got ichikishima which was a pretty nice pick the amaterasu g guard very good one definitely a very necessary card the susano grade 3 is kind of weird the magus grade 1 is also like i haven't seen that card used in forever but i'm not really that and then that much of an expert in ott that perfect guard i guess has been used question mark in some decks in the past but i don't think it is used anymore psychic bird has had a lot of reprints but still nice to have and of course the witch stand used to be but this one feels a bit of a miss for angels i actually really like this uh, Reprint list Eden still a very important card for angels. The Sariel that G guard is super important. Original Black Shiver Gabriel not so much. Maybe like Prim would have been better, but I mean it's okay. Aratoron is a common that keeps coming back for the you know like uh, like loopy decks. And I, I personally this one of my favorite angel cards of all time. So I'm very happy to get a rarity upgrade. She also has a misprint in English. Uh, in her original printing, so I'll very happily take out the misprint for a triple rare version. The two no seals got reprinted, which are still used sometimes, you know, especially now that the no seal deck exists, like these grade ones are actually used here and there. So that's really, really good. Happy to see that. And of course, Surgery Angel, what a godlike stand trigger to reprint. Very, very important for angels. I cannot stress it enough. For Nubatama, this one's pretty interesting. It's very Shironui based. So we have two of the good Shironui strides, I would say. We have the Mujin Lord, which was used a lot in the Dominate deck back then, the G Guard, as well as the actual like trial deck Shironui, and then the Great Two and the Stand Trigger. Now, I don't really know much about Shironui anymore these days and like how the deck looks like anymore, but hey, I mean, these cards have seen use. So I think these are pretty good hits, but honestly, like I don't really know much about Nubatama to really comment on this. So I'll let you guys in the comments kind of figured that out but then for aqua force this is kind of cool alexandros isn't used that much anymore but i could see potential in the future same for the grade 3 thavas it is used in like g era thavas of course but not really so much now original title salt is good both g guards i think are used quite a lot so that is good supersonic is a really nice one that one hasn't been reprinted i think ever so that's a really nice one and the stand trigger is kind of like it felt like they had to fill space basically they had to fill up space find something to print that's where we are. Then more clan collection prints, and this one had a lot of people excited. Spike Brothers, Dudley Emperor came back.
deck together with uh, Dudley Feet Mason and of course Dudley Daisy. So, you know, a few cards from way back in Limit Break era that really are fan favorites, especially Dudley Emperor. I know a lot of people got their first like competitive tops with this deck way back in 2012. So it's really cool to see Dudley Emperor come back with a super badass art. Like this art is amazing. So his, the effects say, uh, Dudley Daisy calls more units when plays due to a card ability. So it basically extends more attacks, but probably. Then Mason, in addition to an unhit skill, it will also have a skill when it leaves the field. Crazy. I wonder what kind of skill that will be. And of course, Dudley Emperor gives your rearguards a power up when they attack, but they will be removed afterwards. So that kind of ties well with Mason. You know, he'll have some ability on whenever he like gets put back to deck or whatever that Dudley Emperor does. If you put them to soul, that's pretty cool too. But if you put them back to deck, it means you can use them, you know, search them out again later. So that's quite nice. And then for Gear Chronicle, oh boy, they went pretty hard for this one because they're reprinting or I guess printing Chronos Command and Chronos Command looks insane. Looks way more like a buddy fight card than actually a Vang like how it used to look in Vanguard before. Together with that, we also have Kaliboom as well as Gigi. Gigi used to be the Soul Blast 2 draw one and Kaliboom of course was used a lot in Time Leap to just bot deck your, your opponent's starter and stuff like that. So the descriptions for these ones, GG. You can call it when discarded from hand. Furthermore, it has a useful skill to draw on rearguard. So this is like, you know, more copies of Ribble in a deck and Chrono Tooth. I'll definitely take that. That sounds really good to me. Caliboom, a skill that can return any player's rearguard to the deck. Additional abilities are activated depending on the returned card's grade. So it feels like old Caliboom with more of a payoff, which is definitely something I like. You know, we don't have, you know, four runners in V Premium, but of course in Premium, that would be pretty nice. You know, to like bot deck the opponent's Conroe and then do something when a grade zero is like bot deck and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. And then Chronos Command itself, it can return all of your opponent's rearguards to the deck. That alone is strong, but it has an additional skill. The Chrono Jet Dragon deck advances to a new stage. So yeah, looks good, looks good. I'm excited to see how I can buff up my Chrono Jet, still one of my favorite decks in V Premium, so I'm really excited to see how the support will shape up for this one. Then we also got the English release date for Lyrical Monasterio. So this trial deck comes out on the 24th of September. That's on a pretty nice date. And then the booster set comes out on the 1st of October, just a week later. So for the Lyrical Monasterio folks, you can mark your calendars. You have three months and a bit left until then. So it's gonna be an exciting time. I know a lot of people are very excited. I might build like one deck from these. I kind of like the Dragon Girl, the Keshing Girl, as well as the Ghost Girl. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Maybe I will give it a look. Then we had more reveals for Clan Collection. This time it was Genesis. So we had Valencia drawn, of course, still by Futsi Choco. Very nice. Camomile made a return. That one surprised a lot of people. And Fortuna. Valencia and Camomile say these two cards work well with Genesis and make use of Soul Blast abilities. Valencia has a skill that builds Soul when she's Soul Blasted, kind of like the original one. And Camomile is an attacker that calls herself when she's Soul Blasted during your turn, just like the original Kamamil, which is very nice. Goddess of Good Luck Fortuna, by paying her soul blast cost, you'll be able to see your fate. Of course, you can guarantee triggers during your drive check, but also damage check. Further effects will activate when a trigger is revealed for damage check. That's really, really cool. The fact that you can change your damage check into like, let's say like you check a blank in damage and then you go like, uh, actually, put it to the bottom of the deck or whatever it does to like try to like check a heal or something that is really cool i actually really like that kind of interesting new mechanic that they are going to explore in genesis it's very unique to fortuna herself so i think it's quite nice and then of course for tachikaze they went in on the ancient dragons here because we have iguana gorg looks super cool actually dino cloud as well as spino driver so iguana gorg has a skill to return to the board when retired just like its past incarnation it'll let you get more and more out of your retire cost so just that kind of combo place all that we've had in the past Dino Crowd, a super powerful attacker that can power up by retiring one of your own rear guards. So chances are it'll gain power in a crit from how they describe that. And Spino Driver, acquire Axel gifts by retiring your own rear guards. Call units to those Axel circles and relentlessly attack your opponent. Sounds very straightforward. You know, you just could probably like main phase pop your own stuff to make an Axel marker or something, and then you basically just bash. The ancient dragons will have skills to give themselves armed gauge, or you know, like what is it called again? Div like not Divine Gauge, but Busso Gauge, whatever it's called. I guess it's Arm Gauge, huh? When your Drive Check reveals a trigger. Pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, we'll see how that shapes up. And in the middle of BSFO, they revealed the Pale Moon and Gold Paladin stuff. So for Pale Moon, it's all new stuff, right? These are all like bunny archetype cards. So first we have Amusing Bunny, a grade one bunny to help the Beast Tamers combine the power of different bunnies to create the most spectacular show. That tells us literally nothing. Bunny Beast Tamers assistant, Clarina. She gets drive plus one when there's a lot of bunny grade ones in your soul and adds your rear guards. She may be just an assistant, but her skill as a Beast Tamer are first class. I mean, that's 
sounds good. But you know, is that drive plus one only on Vanguard Circle? Is she a grade three or is she like a grade two? Does that work only on the grade two turn? A lot of questions, but I look forward to seeing what they're going to do with it. And of course, the seemingly grade three Bunny Beast Tamer TDFs. The more bunny grade ones in your soul and as your rear guards, the more powerful your board becomes. Furthermore, with the aid of other Beast Tamers, such as Golden Beast Tamer, the show will be even more exciting than usual. Is this going to be like a copy Beast Tamer effects effect? Because this has a lot of potential in premium if it does. I'm not sure actually if it does that much, but it'll be interesting to see. For this one, it's kind of hard for me to tell like what they're trying to do with it. Maybe something, maybe nothing. We'll find out. For me, the real hype was Gold Paladin though, because I really like Bluish Flames way back in the day. And so it's really cool for them to come back. So here we have Yosefus found on as well as Prominence Core. So of course we already have Prominence Glare and Core is looking amazing. So for Gold Paladin, Fast Chase Liberator Yosefus has the ability to both draw and counter charge when placed from the deck. So that's kind of like a Din Drain ability, but probably with like better stats and I guess restriction to be placed from the deck rather than like from hand, I think. I think it was placed from hand, I think for, or whatever the restriction was on Din Drain. Regardless, it sounds like a, a other alternative to Din Drain. Liberator of Royalty Fallon, attacker that calls more allies to the board when he hits this sounds a little bit whack like on hit abilities have never been like super great so i don't know if this will be really worth it but then prominence core bluish flame liberator prominence core powers up every time you call a rear guard if that rear guard is aglo veil the boost will be much bigger he has another skill that gets enhanced if you have percival in your soul so of course percival's not reprinted in this set which made a lot of people kind of angry whereas aglo veil is so uh yeah pick up your percivals while you still can or try to dig them up from your divine lightning radiance boxes or just buy divine lightning radiance you know there's a few things you can do it's only a double rare so i guess it kind of makes it easier to pull but still it's kind of like i'm excited for it i got my percivals in preparation for this but man i hope that i can make as much of a bluish flame deck as possible without having to like double dip into other archetypes because this is really cool we've been going for so long even though i'm trying to speed run here but we got a few more orphan support cards yesterday first we have cardinal prima ecloppa when she attacks or boosts, if your world is Abyssal Dark Knight, retire a Shadow Army token to counter charge one. Now this card initially, I was like, ooh, this is kind of cool. It's like a budget, you know, alternative to Bubble Mine, which it still is. Like it's a really good alternative to Bubble Mine. My only problem is that it has to be on attack or boost to pop that Shadow Token. So you can't like use her to boost a Shadow Token to like then counter charge. It's like, no, you have to like basically attack with a Shadow Army Token column and then attack with her or boost with her to then pop the one that already attacked or boosted basically to get that counter charge and you also don't get the soul that bubble mine gives which other deck like as we go into the future this deck will need so i think it's 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 a good replacement for bubble mine but i'm not sure if it powers like the deck as well as it could art wise very cool and i think in general like this has potential but just a little timing there is a little bit unfortunate in my opinion and then we have cardinal prima ardepo when put on guardian circle if your world is dark knight soul charge one and if it's abyssal dark knight soul charge two so only on guardian circle so it's a little bit restrictive in that sense and how you can use it but soul charge support might come in handy you know looking at the future stuff for this deck you know it's they're definitely going in on the soul here and there but now some worlds are also using cow bus, so you know that's going to kind of change things a little bit and i think that you know we'll see she might be a good card to have just for the future sakes but also only activating Guardian Circle is a little bit restrictive, so I don't know. We'll see. All right, we have two more, well, four more V Clan Collection reveals. First one of which was from, still from Volume 1, which was the Murakumo one. So these are brand new cards. First, we have Stealth Fiend Fright Sickle. So I think that's a great two that can power up and draw by returning to your deck. Actually, I haven't read these yet, so this will be news to me as well. Seems good. I guess it powers up one of your units and puts itself back to deck, and then you draw. And then Lady Silhouetta. She's very pretty, by the way. By revealing a great to a lower unit from your hand, you can call a card from your hand with the same name. Furthermore, even if its attack is guarded, it will remove an opponent's rear guard. That's kind of nice. It's kind of like Shadow Stitch-ish, which I think is cool. She looks super nice, but I'm, I'm wondering how exactly that effect will be worded. And then Stealth Fiend Lord... Nura Hyoga, the lord of the Hyaki Yagyo, the home of the stealth fiends. Increase your drive checks for each stealth fiend follower in play. With the extra drive checks, bring the vengeance of demons down upon your opponent. Very edgy, but sounds pretty strong. Like if you just like pump yourself full of extra drives and like, I don't know, 
call stuff that you drive checked at some point or whatever this effect does that could be pretty sweet that could be pretty sweet but i think the bigger hype was definitely dark irregulars because they brought back ragey so first they have bestial squeezer mm, i don't know <laughs> all right it has two skills to increase your soul without reducing the amount of cards in your deck so that's probably gonna soul charge from damage or soul charge from field or soul charge from drop zone that's usually what those things mean sounds like a killer tail to me blaze foresight that sounds like an anime move i can't add any cards to soul because my hand is full of grade zeros this will be a convenient unit that can solve situations like those so it sounds like it's going to be like when you place it any cards you guard with will go to your soul or stuff like you know soul charge stuff from drop zone but it sounds more like it will allow you to put stuff that you guarded with into the soul after guarding which is nice and then Blade Wing Regi, an ability that is amplified by the number of Wings of Destruction. When it reaches 15, the finale will descend upon the field. Nothing, literally you can't tell anything about Regi from that description. It's edgy as can be, the art is nice, but I guess wait to find out what actually does in the future. All right, speedrun continues. Today we had a couple Keter cards. We had the first Dragon Dragon, because this is Soaring Dragon Prideful Dragon. <laughs> People are saying it's like, wow, the first Dragon Dragon isn't even in Dragon Empire. That's amazing. So this is a double rare for Keter Sanctuary. When he attacks, if you have four more Great Three Regards, Count Boss 1, Soul Boss 1 to draw. And if you Persona, draw one, that is. And if you Persona Road this turn, instead of drawing a card, you may use until end of turn. This unit gets power plus 5k and critical plus 1. Seems good, because it's for that turn. So you can basically swing with this on like a turn of like you know persona ride give him that extra crit and then you basically restand him with bastion to attack with that crit again like this card i think we'll definitely see his play in bastion four more grade threes is not really a problem for bastion you know it feels like bastion's like chad warden chad bastion four grade three is not a problem for chad bastion so i think this this will be used in bastion for sure it seems like a really good card the art is also really clean and i think it's just just feels good Feels good. That's all I can really say. Then we have Knight of Destruction Kapal. When placed on Rearguard Circle from hand, she's a grade 2. Cut almost 1 and rest another Rearguard. Reveal the top card of your deck. If it's an order card or grade 3 unit, put it into your hand. Otherwise, call it. This seems good in anything other than Bastion. Or I guess even in Bastion, it's fine because you can just like play the card that you added like it's just kind of one to rest another rear guard to like plus and you can rest a bunch of stuff it just said in bastion it's a great two so you don't really want to play it so i feel like this will have more of a place in hexa orb or final blaster dragon for the time being which is pretty cool and then today's clan collection reveals were mega colony as well as grand blue so for mega colony we got the giraffe cards poopa mutant giraffe and elite, elite mutant giraffe both of them power up the more rest regards your opponent has their skills can be used in all mega colony decks not just one center on giraffe it seems nice i mean that's a very easy condition for mega colony so i think that's pretty cool and then evil armor general giraffe paralyze your opponent's regards a skill that prevents standing but this time it's extremely aggressive uh oh all right let's see how it is your opponent will escape from giraffe is paralyzed even if they don't have any rear guards so this will either eat stuff from your drop zone and paralyze them or it will ask you to hand call stuff and paralyze them which i think could be extra yikes so i would watch out for how mega colony is going to look in this set because this looks a little bit scary from that description and then for grand blue see strolling banshee you can select any cards to mill from your deck when you ride her which is super strong by the way you just like set up a columbar target so set up a greed shade target immediately this is insane for every single form Format, you know that grand blue is played in so it's pretty nuts and as a rear guard she has a skill to draw while also increasing the size of your drop zone so it sounds to me like it's like a soul boss one to draw which does the job you know blong has, gets resurrected when noir attacks she has a reliable skill when guarding too so i guess maybe it's it's something like when you guard with her so your deck put something in the drop zone that would be pretty cool and pinot noir has a skill that activates when blanc is called which is also good also good you know because she gets resurrected when noir attacks this new style for grand blue becomes more powerful the more triggers are in your drop zone a cool description you know because of course you know you can just place a bunch of triggers in the drop zone you know from just milling right you mill all your triggers that's what grand players do but it feels like what if you don't like what if you actually have a nice clean mill without any triggers like does this deck do nothing well i guess we'll find out right and then we get to actual today's stream reveals and i want to kill this before we hit the 40 minute mark and i'm not sure if we will first Keter sanctuary shout out paladin stuff we have the ride deck that was revealed today so phantom blaster blaster dark blaster javelin full bow and then the other two cards will be revealed through today 
today's card. So card of the day, which are Maka and Karen. And Karen has 7k power, so it probably has a pretty good effect. I don't know what to expect from these, but I I feel like Maka might be a double rare at this rate. Then for Dragon Empire, here are the six. So this was Dragonic Overlord, Nahalem, Bar, and Undo, which we got today. And then of course we have Berserk Dragon and Gojo as the other support cards. And these will be the only support cards, the only encounter cards for this entire year, which is cool. Of course, the starters, both Full Battle and Undo, do the same thing when wrote upon when you go second draw a card. But when I saw this, what I really liked is that their text boxes are black. Like that's a really cool effect that adds to that kind of like ancient feeling of these cards. Then we have, all right, we're going, going to go through the PBD ride line first. Blaster Javelin. When wrote upon by Blaster Dark, reveal the top card of your deck and call it to Rigor Circle as rest if it's a unit card and discard it if it isn't. That's already cool. And during your turn, Rigor Circle, if you have Vanguard Blaster in his card name, he gets plus 2k, so he's a 10k booster. Might, I don't know if he'll be played four times, might just be like a one of in the ride deck, but it's pretty cool. It's kind of like the one from Bastion that you plus on ride, but this is basically like you plus on ride, but it's going to be as rest. Can still pop off with some crazy on place effects, but I think this is really nice, you know, because you do retire your own stuff in this deck. So getting that free plus one is definitely very much appreciated for this deck. Then Blaster Dark basically copied his V series abilities, which I think is very fitting. I personally like the V series form of Blaster Dark a lot. When he is placed on a Vanguard Circle or Rearguard Circle, you can almost want to retire another Rearguard. So, for example, the thing you called with Javelin to choose one opponent's Rearguards and retire it, and the tuning gets drive plus one until end of turn. Then Rearguard Circle continuous during your turn. If your Rearguard was retired this turn, he gets plus 5k. So he's a 15k attacker, which we've seen in Overdress is very important. Now, a confusion that a lot of new players had was like, this drive checks on Rearguard Circle? No way! It does not. Every card by default has drive check abilities, but they only activate on the Vanguard Circle. Every single card, every single card. All grade threes have twin drive, all grade twos and ones and zeros have single drive, but they only activate on Vanguard Circle, or if they were to be used on Rearguard Circle, they have to be activated by another ability, such as the Keter Sanctuary Over Trigger, which lets your Rearguards drive check when they attack. So yes, if you check a Keter Sanctuary Over Trigger on your drive check while you have used Blaster Dark's ability in the rear guard circle, he will turn twin drive indeed, but any other situation he will not. So please keep that in mind. Do not drive check with this on rear guard circle on a regular turn, please. But all you know that aside, this is a really good card. This for overdress is really good. For premium is also really good. It feels like a better version of the V series one, you know, and it's really good because I think this is sadly, for better or worse, the best card they've shown for this deck. Because drive checking two on turn one or in turn two rather is really nice. But of course, let's look at Phantom Master Dragon himself. You know, this is my kind of nostalgia boner playing here. It was one of my favorite decks back when I was an edgy teenager, and of course, I do feel a little bit of attachment to this card. And so he says, when you place him on Vanguard Circle, you choose a card with Blaster his card name from your soul and you may call it to rear circle so he just pushes out blaster dark for example or if you persona ride pushes out himself you know this has also a nice premium kind of like use you can use it in premium to like whatever you play whatever blasters you have you know superior call them out and then once per turn vanguard circle you can count almost one and retire three of your own rear guards to choose up to two of your opponent's rear guards retire them and he gets plus 10k and plus one credit until end of turn this is very much the original phantom blaster dragon by all means it feels okay Purely, the reason why I say that it feels okay is that this is very easily counterplayed. Like, think of Barrow Magnus, for example, that ends its turn with a one card board or two card board or zero card, like zero rear guard board. Would you be willing to count us one and retire three of your own just to get 10k and a crit? No, it's it's not worth it. So a lot of decks are like Fasado, for example, just dances around it. The same decks that have been denying Prison and the same decks that have been denying Eugene are still going to keep at it. And this is going to be another deck that kind of falls victim to that. And so it's just a little bit unfortunate that that's how it works. But Karen and Maka could change things and we'll find out soon. You know, maybe even tomorrow, maybe next week. Who knows? Let's look at the Dragon Empire stuff. First, we have Bar, Embodiment of Armor Bar, more like Embodiment of Conroe bar when you see this effect. When he's rode upon by Nahalem, Kanawas 1, search your deck for up to 1 grade 1 card, reveal it, put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. Yes, this can search out your perfect guard. Yes, in premium, this can search out Zazan, just like Conroe can. I think this card for Overdress is really great. Being able to secure PGs is really nice, and also any other important grade ones that you might need. He also gets 5k once per turn Rearguard Circle when your Vanguard's attack hits anything, which is also pretty good. But yeah, this card is good. It might invite some damage denying, where people just straight up like don't attack you on your first turn to not give you the Cattle Boss to use it, to be able to tutor out that perfect guard, which I think is also a nice little like dynamic that it adds to the game. And of course, 
first degree two Nahalem when rode upon by a unit with Overlord in its card name, you call him to Rear Guard Circle. That has really cool premium interactions, so I like that a lot already. And Rear Guard Circle once per turn, if you have a Vanguard with Overlord in its card name, Soul Blast 1, and this unit and all of your Vanguards get power plus 5k until end of turn. Reason why it says all of your Vanguards is because in, you know, premium, you can use this with like the Legion, the cross, where you give both of the Overlords plus 5, so it gets a plus 10 for Soul Blast 1, which is pretty good. But even then, this is nice. It makes your Overlord, you know, more pressure with that on hit that it has. And it also makes itself a 15k attacker, which as we've said many times in Overdress is very important. And finally, let's take a look at the big man of the show himself, Dragonic Overlord. Vanguard and Rearguard Circle. During the battle of this unit, attack the Rearguard. Your opponent cannot call cards from their hand to Guardian Circle. And then Vanguard Circle once per turn. When this unit's attack hits, you may count last one and discard a card from your hand to stand him. And he gets drive minus one till end of turn. So yes, you know, this is a very Dragonic Overlord ability. Who would have thought Vanguard Restand? Whoa, it sure couldn't have been Overlord. That first effect, some people got spooked at first. I was like, no, what do you mean I can't guard? But then, you know, it says you can't call from hand to Guardian Circle. You can still use Blitz Orders to make things unhittable. You know, you can still, you can still intercept away with stuff like Brody if necessary, but you can also just let him hit and, you know, like, filter one card and restand it's fine i think this the card is really well designed personally like if you're gonna put a restanding vanguard into overdress this is probably the best way to do it because you basically he gets one pop on the rear and he also has like vanguard on hit pressure because of that first skill like he can just attack vanguard instead of like you know swinging at the rears and you don't like you don't confirm the restand but you get your opponent to draw up cards from their hand to like not let you restand so if anything your opponent loses like two cards trying to no pass this or two to pass this whereas you lost nothing so that's that's also a cool little dynamic that, you know, otherwise maybe they would have, you know, would have let it through, but they didn't because they're afraid of that on hit. So I think this card is really well designed. I personally think that, especially Overlord, feels really, really good. I think it's not, like, better than the current decks because, I mean, look at Bruce, look at Bastion, look at Prison after this set, look at Orphis after this set, look at everything after this set. It feels like it's, it's like, quite impressive that from the first set of support already, they've made this deck kind of, like, be up to par with the other stuff. That's what I've heard from people testing. KBD, on the other hand, I don't know. We'll have to see the support cards of course both of these decks are gonna get two support cards each that will find the effects out you know pretty soon so just look forward to that anyway next week we're gonna find out Verena Elgar as well as two other cards for Nirvana support as well as the set three announcement in terms of the visuals and whatever other details I'm very excited so look forward to that um I think maybe once we go into like more collab news and more like lyrical stuff, I'm going to slow down on these videos because it gets really exhausting making them. And especially on days like this where my schedule is pretty packed, it's a little bit difficult, but I try. Anyway, y'all, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm going to stop here before I ramble on any longer. New cards, cool. Vanguard exciting. Vanguard best game. BSFO was fun, but I'll talk about that more in other videos. Anyway, take care, everyone. Thanks for coming through. Thanks for watching the videos and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.